Welcome to Meeting the Needs of Male Victims of Domestic and Family Violence. My name is Josh Sweeney and I'm from the Australian Institute of Criminology. The presenters today are Dr. Elizabeth Shelley, and we have on the panel Tony McLean, Greg Anderson, and Greg Milan. Now, Dr. Elizabeth Shelley is a psychologist in private practice specialising in men's mental health. And since releasing her first book in 2008, Regular Joe versus Mr. Invincible, The Battle for the True Man, has grown in her own awareness of the silent phenomena of male victims of domestic abuse, astounded at the oppressive personal impact on men and the social blind spot on this sector of our community. She now actively advocates for this much needed area of men's mental health. And as you can imagine, Elizabeth has never been short of stimulating discussions and debates on this issue and broader issues affecting men's identity. And with regular appearances on TV, several radio interviews, and keynotes in Parliament for Men's Mental Health Summits, Elizabeth sheds light on misperceptions surrounding men's psychology. She's looking forward to facilitating, along with the present panel today, some healthy and robust discussion on developing awareness understanding and services assisting male victims and female perpetrators of intimate partner abuse and violence. Thank you. Thanks a lot Josh. <coughs> Welcome everybody and good on you for lasting the distance. It's the second day of a two day and after lunch. So thank you very much for joining us this afternoon for this extended panel discussion. We do hope to get into some discussion a little later on with you. Um, I'll briefly introduce uh, an overview of this particular area, but first up, I'd also like to thank the Australian Institute of Criminology and the sponsors for us being able to share this information and discussion with you today. Um, so as Josh mentioned, I work as a psychologist in Melbourne and helping specialising in men's mental health general <laughs> issues, and in particular since releasing my first book, this uh, phenomena that even I was very ignorant and unaware of <laughs> up to five years ago of male victims of domestic abuse. I now do a lot more on the social and media education uh, level and I'm very happy to be sharing this with you today. So in a few minutes, um, for a few minutes, I'll just be giving you the social psychology side of this that often many of us have confronted in, in doing some of our own work and education in this area so that we can set some of it up, um, of the scene up for you. Um, just so that some of you are aware, we do have a camera recording on the panel itself for our own professional um, debrief and development purposes, but none of you are being recorded, so just so that you're aware of that. Um, so as Josh had mentioned, we've got Tony McLean who will be speaking to you, uh, each presenter will be giving a different angle on this particular topic, and Tony McLean will be sharing some of the research evidence and the methodological considerations um, with regard to this area. Greg Andreessen will then talk to you about the personal and the social experiences of male victims um, of family violence in its variable um, dimensions and, and interplay, um, and some of the barriers to them disclosing, and if they do disclose some of the difficulties they may face in receiving the kind of care and support that they need. And last but not least, we've got Greg Milan, a men's health consultant of over 20 years, and he'll be informing you of a training program for providers, um, other service providers, health providers and workers in helping men that have been affected by violence. Uh, so we'll ask you to hold any questions for any of us till after all of the speakers have presented their information. Um, we'll have about 30 to 40 minutes after all the presentations so we can really dig into some discussion with you. So please jot down your questions along the way um, that arise for you and we'll be sure to attend to them as we finish the presentations. Um, in my growing awareness of this issue, um, clinically and in the social advocacy endeavours, myself and other workers in this field have constantly battled with a particular overarching theme that comes up. And please excuse me if this is repeating it for many of you in here, but it's worth repeating just so that we're always aware of a particular perception or a paradigm of male perpetrator, female victim, 100% of the time. Now there's obviously no denying there are male perpetrators and female victims. Of course there's a lot of important work being done in this area and needs to continue. It's the 100% of the time part that we keep encountering and it's probably best expressed um, having been a Rotarian for five years and meeting various Rotarians in different areas. We had a district assembly a few weeks ago and met a man I hadn't met before and he asked what do you do? Well, I'm a psychologist and I specialise in men's mental health and work with male victims of domestic abuse. And straightened up and confused look on his face and the comment was, they exist. 
and that's a common thing that we often get and people aren't educated about. So um, this is the social perceptions we're also needing to break. So um, as you're well aware, domestic violence services have been init were initially established, and rightly so, to assist female victims, of course. Um, over the years, over the decades, psychologically, with constant reinforcement um, of assisting female victims and male perpetrators, the paradigm of men can only ever be perpetrators and women can only ever be victims has unfortunately become ingrained. And whilst we know the research shows otherwise, um, it's an innocent uh, blind spot that um, has been developed over the years that makes it difficult for male victims to get service, um, attention and help. And so it's this perceptual bias and the blind spot that we're looking to address that's been inadvertently developed in this particular field. So putting this in a broader social context for you, where female victims were over four decades ago in terms of the silence of their plight and experience and distress, male victims are at that place now. Uh, it is a silent phenomena of domestic abuse or violence toward men that's occurring, as my Rotarian friend highlighted, and many others in conversations I've had. And so we're very much focused on community and service provider awareness and education that's required to really ensure appropriate services are available for men. And as Greg Andreessen will mention, some of the um, blocks that men may face um, through their service provision to just get some support. So a key uh, perception or factor on the other side of the coin that I'd just like to pose to you as we go through our presentations is where are we at currently in our views and approach toward female perpetrators of abuse and violence? So we can have male victims and speak about them, but we also need to assist female perpetrators so that everyone in this intricate dynamic gets the assistance that they need. Please let me make some things clear for you, given our collective experience with this topic, that in speaking about male victims, we're in no way diminishing the existence of female victims, their needs and the work that's being done in this area. It's in no way diminishing resources or about diminishing resources toward assisting female victims and male perpetrators. It's very important work and that obviously needs to continue. And each speaker may reiterate this along the way, but if they don't mention it, it hasn't been forgotten. So we do most certainly espouse to that very strongly. Having said that, and in this vein, the reality of female victims can neither be a reason that we disregard male victims or their needs and a lot of work that needs to be done for them, or disregarding female perpetrators also being accountable uh, to their behaviour and being able to learn some skills. So in a human um, level, abuse is abuse, and it is unacceptable. I'll finalise on this slide before I hand over to Tony, um, but just take a moment to review these myths and perceptions that are out there, some of which, again, you may already be aware of, but very much worth reiterating as we hear a lot of the detail that the presenters will now be giving to you, and I'll just read them out because they pretty much speak for themselves. That men are always aggressors or initiators in domestic violence disputes, which is clearly false. How could you possibly hurt him? It just doesn't happen. Men are big and strong, therefore he can take it. Definitely false. Men aren't, men aren't afraid of women's violence or psychological abuse. In our experience, definitely false. He must have done something to deserve it, which is quite a difficult one for men to deal with when they've been um, experiencing the battering of abuse and violence. Definitely false. And most important, men don't feel it or are unaffected by it. They obviously show their symptoms or their experiences and distress differently, but just because they show it differently doesn't mean they're not affected by it, so definitely false. So please just keep those in mind as you hear the um, presenters. 